We don't have an elected. Uh... Can call to order, though. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, Tourism Commission. I'm sorry, is it Miss or Mrs. Lau? Miss. Mrs. Lau, would you like to do a roll call, please? So, Corvino. Carpenter. Oh, here. Sorry. Oh, say a little louder, sorry. Gemma Lynn? Here. 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 Um, Wyman? Here. All right, um, next on the agenda is the uh, approval of minutes from previous meeting, July 18th. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion, uh, first and second. Anything to discuss? Motion to pass, we need a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is the election of a chairperson, vice chair, and secretary. I think you're doing a wonderful job as chairperson. <laughs> 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 He was going to get thrown on the bus on that one. <laughs> Motion to close the nomination. Uh, we actually need a nomination for each position from. Do we need a, uh, just a nomination and a second or, I'm sorry, just a nomination or? I think normally you get a motion and a, or a nomination and a second for each one. Okay. And what normally has happened, I think, in the past is you have a vote on each one as you go through them. They ask for nominations for the first one. If there's multiples, then you have, yeah. All right, so by nomination from Mr. Gentleman, uh, we need a second. Second. Right. Nomination is for Jasper Harden. Jasper Harden as chair. As chair? Yeah. Yes. So we have for a second, I guess, from the appointment nomination. Second. Or other, if there's any other nominations, I guess. Yeah. Well, and second, do we take a vote then? No. Uh, yeah. yeah. So all those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. And we need a nomination for vice chairperson. I'll nominate myself. <laughs> okay. I had a girl. <laughs> Why not? I'll second. All in um, favor? Aye. Aye. I'll vote. Six. Aye. I'm in favor, but yes. <laughs> Motion passes. I would need a nomination for secretary. There's only two of you left. Do you want to flip a coin? I'll nominate myself. All right. There's a second? I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Yeah, <laughs> All right, uh, next on the agenda, public comments. Um, we have two sitting in the audience. I think they're here for the presentation though on um, Taste and Glow, is that correct? Both of you are here for that? Yep. Yeah. Michael, do we have anybody online? Um, just staff. Sorry? My, myself and... Um, Tim over there. To do the yeah. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> Double dipping. Hmm. Gotcha. Um, so no public comments. We'll move on. Work product transmission transmittal number six, July budget status report. When I catch the budget status report, it shows all the payments we received through the end of July, which is twenty eleven thousand five forty. We did receive a few payments into August. Um, the payments to the CDB is quarter one. We did issue quarter two last week um, after we received all the payments. Um, you can see the tax collected by each motel on the bottom there. Uh, 
Um, are there any questions on the budget slides? You roll back up, please, Jessica. Thank you. Anybody have any comments? If not, we just need a motion to accept it. Motion. Second. Second. Oh. Or oh, did you have comments? Anybody yeah. have any comments? We don't vote usually. I just. Uh, it's just to acknowledge. Yeah, you usually <clears throat> vote to acknowledge that. Yeah, vote to acknowledge. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion to acknowledge passes. All right, number seven, presentation on Taste and Glow. Yes, I am Tim. <laughs> Thank you. I am Tim White, the executive director of the Wausau CVB. Glad to see you, esteemed Weston Tourism Commission. Let me uh, share with you just uh, what has happened and some of the statistics that we were able to glean from the Taste and Glow. Um, it was a great event. How many people attended and went? Yeah, yeah. so you kind of saw, I saw Keith there. Uh, you saw some of the effects and the numbers, uh, the crowds that were there. Um, it, was a, it was a great event, uh, a lot of people. Um, they had ramped up the uh, programming of it. In addition to the balloons, there were um, log rollers, lumberjack competition. There was kids inflatables. There was a huge craft area. Um, there were vendors for food and crafts, and you know presentations. All kinds of all kinds of things were going on uh, all weekend long, and so. Um, it, it was an amazing event, and, and I believe that everybody just had a great time uh, all day long. In the evening, of course, the, the glow part where the balloons would fire up and glow. Um, to let you know where people came from, we had representation at the Taste and Glow from every continental state except for Vermont and Wyoming. Not really sure why, but uh, it's pretty impressive that people came from around the country. To, uh, to attend this event. It's definitely an international affair as well. I know that there were some folks from Europe uh, that attended as well. If we uh, drill down a little bit more specifically, we'll see that uh, the majority of people came from an, uh, just outside an hour away from this area, uh, but we had a lot of visitors from the Green Bay, Appleton, Fox Valley area um, a, a huge increase in Milwaukee area people, a really good, uh, a really good representation from Chicago, um, the Eau Claire La Crosse area, uh, Madison area, as well as the Twin Cities. And we can take a look at uh, those top source markets. And you can see that over the course of the three days that, um, you know, the attendance was really high on Friday. Uh, it kind of peaked, leveled off a little bit on Saturday, and then of course it started to go down on Sunday. I'll give you the true numbers. But you can see that those areas that represented well were uh, the, the Milwaukee area. Again, you know, they've never had numbers like that before for Milwaukee. And I think the reason uh, because of that is because of the marketing money that was spent on advertising online and on TV. Um, they had about five to 600,000 impressions of uh, social media ads um, using different, uh, different advertising, digital advertising. And so there were, it really increased the awareness, not only in the Milwaukee market, but the Chicago market as well. And the attendance um, from those markets just uh, it actually beat out the Twin Cities market. So last year, there were more people from the Twin Cities that attended uh, than the Milwaukee market. This year, the Milwaukee market uh, beat that out. So that's that's really good sign that the advertising and promotion is working. So we estimated, um, based on the on the data that we uh, 
ramped up on board with the Zartico app that at least 30,000 people attended on Friday who lived more than an hour away. So that's not including the local residents that we would you know, include who probably wouldn't stay overnight, they'd probably go home. Uh, on Saturday, the number was uh, at least 60,000 people. That's been confirmed and that's an hour or more away. And Sunday was 5,000 people. It, wind, it kind of wound down on Sunday. So there were a few things in the morning, but it was over uh, pretty quickly. If we take a look at uh, what points of interest categories are, are the visitors most concentrated in on that weekend, you can see uh, the top bar on kind of on the right hand middle says uh, 48 percent, 40, what is it, I can't even see. Yeah, almost 49 percent. Um, we're doing outdoor uh, activities, which includes the Taste and Glow. Mm -hmm. And you can see that uh, on the far right, the accommodations, 20% um, of the visitors in the area stayed in a hotel. Um, and that's a, vi that's a visitor to resident ratio of 1.88. So at almost two visitors for every one resident uh, were uh, around the uh, hotel accommodations, which would make sense. Um, if we take a look at cardholder spending as well, we can see that the top markets were Chicago and uh, the further away that you are from the area, the more money per transaction you're going to spend. Uh, the biggest circle was from Tampa, St. Pete. They spent an average of $109 uh, per transaction. So obviously they were staying for a number of days. And I believe that I, th I think some of the balloonists were from that area as well. So then if we drill down to Weston itself, of all the total visitor spending for those three days, Weston accounted for 15% of the total visitor spending. And you can see where the people came from. Uh, there are people from Milwaukee. And so the dark blue shows um, this year's spending from that market. And the lighter blue underneath shows last year's spending. So Milwaukee spending, increased, Green Bay decreased a little bit, uh, the Twin Cities um, decreased, but Madison increased, uh, the Wassa area outside of the Wassa area increased, Chicago increased, La Crosse Eau Claire really increased. You can see that just the, uh, again, the, the advertising really worked, allowed uh, for those markets to be served. And I believe that, you know, people in Milwaukee, people in the Chicago area saw the advertising and thought, oh, let's come up here and, uh, you know, spend time and go to this event and enjoy the other things in Wausau. So in Weston, again, the top, uh, the top visitor spending, uh, it's usually, uh, it's usually fuel, but here it was uh, grocery stores and supermarkets. So I guess uh, people are trying to be a little bit more, uh, what, uh, conservative and spending of their money. You can see that the Holiday Inn Express, John's Holiday, uh, John's Holiday Inn did quite well with visitor spending. Uh, you can see other hotels, uh, fast food restaurants, and then discount store stores. That's the spending in just in Weston. Um, if we look at spending uh, in Weston and we tap down into it even more, you can see uh, a number of the categories where that spending happened in terms of the hotels um, as well. So, and you can see dining as well. If we go even deeper into the data, you'll see where those, uh, the hotels that really benefited the American, uh, John's Hotel the Express, uh, Dale's Weston Lanes, um, the Baymont Tine and Cellar, and Wish Steakhouse. So if we also take a look at the top 10 primary points uh, interest percentage and in, oh this is just showing that the Fairfield in was uh, was up there too so part of the things that we're doing with the data is there's a new version of Zartico coming out 3.0 so I had to take and create regions and neighborhoods and so I actually made a medical corridor that you know um, basically had uh, the Marshfield Clinic over here as part of the cor corridor and the Fairfield got caught in that and so it should be in the other category instead of the, the healthcare category. We're, we're tweaking it all. If we take a look at uh, our own website and what people went to to see 
uh, information on our website, you'll notice that yellow uh, dot in the middle is, is events. So they went looking for events and of course the number one search on the bottom that they looked for was taste and glow. Uh, so people were coming to get more information online to engage with the taste and glow. Then of course, if we drill down again into more uh, spending of money, we can see again, food is really up there. Transportation is secondly, uh, and uh, accommodations is third. Um, you take a look at the visitor spending by day um, in Weston itself, almost 22% on that Friday was uh, visitor spending of all your total spending in the area. You look at the top there, 22.4, almost 23%. And then on Sunday, 23.1% of visitor of all spending in your area was uh, done by visitors. So with the data so far, we've been able to uh, see that visitors spend an average of $54 per credit card transaction. Now we can't track cash. so. Um, we just have to be able to take a look at that kind of spend. And, you know, there was a lot of cash rolling around and at Taste and Glow. So unless you paid the $5 transaction fee for the ATM out there. Um, but we, we uh, are able to find that uh, an average of two credit card transactions a day happened in Weston. Um, the, total, uh, the total amount of money that was generated by tourism for that event is $1.6 million on Friday for the whole area, $3.2 million on Saturday, and $270,000 on Sunday. And so conservative numbers show an over $5 million impact in the greater economy. And if you think that's kind of crazy, the Hmong Festival, which had about 14,000 people, uh, they estimate that they generate about 3 million. So we're, we're actually on par and very accurate. For Weston, because 15% of the visitor spend has been in Weston, that's conservatively a $750,500 return on investment of, uh, of, of the dollar spent. So basically the retur your return on investment for the money that you um, gave for sponsorship and all things, uh, you came up to $76 for every $1 invested which is a great return on investment. Um, our CVB goal is to have a eight to one return on investment. So you did very well. Um, so uh, really excited about next year. And uh, there's a, a lot of things that they learned um, as a result of, uh, you know, the event having it out where they did uh, out in Stateen. Um, and so we're gonna help work with the organization to. Uh, you know, continue, what we recommend continuing to support it. It's, it's an awesome event, not just from the sheer numbers, but in terms of how the whole area really, really benefits from it, from a, a dollar value. So any, any questions? Thank you, Mr. White. Um, I, so did you capture most of that data off of survey then, or was it Google analytics or? Yeah, we, um, we, we captured, that data from a number of sources. So it was uh, some Google Analytics, it was uh, room stays. Um, our star report isn't out yet, so our data will get even more refined when that comes out pretty soon. Um, uh, credit card transactions, uh, cell phone usage, social media usage, response, you know. Um, so for example, if they saw an ad, we're able to track, you know, what they did, where they went you got, after they saw that. Then. What's that? You got your feedback from it then? Yeah, we got feedback, yeah. Okay. And, you know, even just from a standpoint of regular reviews, you know, people on social media and people that I even talk to at the event itself, you know, I, I always like to go around and talk to people too. It was, and I don't know if anybody else did, but, you know, just people really enjoyed it. I mean, yeah, gosh, there was so much stuff going on. Yeah. Maybe like like too much <laughs> at some times. Uh, I, I think it was it was an amazing event. So I think so too. A really good job. Thank yeah. You the report. Good. Anything else? I've got this question. Oh, Barb. Yeah. Barb. Yes. Why didn't they have better signage 
to get to the place because I am not familiar, although I was born and raised in the whole area here, but I was not familiar with that area. And although I had my directions all written down, I, my sister was with me and she said, why don't they have any signs out here? Because she kept telling me to turn right. And I said, no, I'm staying on my plan. <laughs> yeah, they, that's a good question. They did have a lot of signage in various areas. In fact, they actually recommended not going down Statine Road, uh, but to go on the, on the interstate. And there was a, a WISDOT sign that talked about uh, on 29 that showed the best ways to get off. And the, when you took that route, then there were a lot of signs on, on that route. So, but I think that's a good point to- Yeah, well, I came down people. Stewart, I mean, you know, came yeah. down and then I took Stewart to yeah. 94th or 97th yeah. or whatever. And, and that might've been, yeah. I think. And there was absolutely not one sign yeah. Yeah. anywhere. Yeah. And Barb and I talked after the last yes. meeting, and that was something I brought to Steve and Nancy's attention. Okay. It's just having more signage on, you know, the, the public roads instead of the highway. Yeah. So that'll yeah. be a change for next year. But I mean, because I'm not going to take the highway. Yeah. If, I, if I can take a local road, I'll take yeah. a local yeah. road. And I think that was the thing that they were trying to dissuade people from taking the local roads. But that's, yeah, that's feedback that, that they value, we value, and yeah. we'll make and sure they got enough thought, signs. You know, and I, yeah. but I just thought I wanted to bring it up again because, I mean, I can get lost in my backyard. So, yeah. I mean, it's nice <laughs> to have a sign that says, you're, right. you're doing it right. You're, and especially when you got a sister saying, are you sure you shouldn't mention you wanted me to go somewhere else? We're going to make a sign for you that says, Barb, you're lost. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and then you know how to turn around. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? That was a good question, though. Yeah. And we like all that feedback because that helps us plan a better event. So anybody else? Well, thank you for your support for all that you do uh, for tourism without... Uh, the support of the village and the tourism commission, um, it would be not a great experience, but you helped make it a great experience. So thank you. You did a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next on me, anybody have any comments? Next on the agenda is the uh, background of the room tax fund tourism commission. I'm guessing this is you, Jessica. Yeah, I created a summary of um, what basically the room tax is and the history of it. And I guess I was curious if you had any questions on what was in the packet. Basics is we collect the, the hotels have an 8% tax on in room stays that are not exempt. Um, they turn all those fees over to the village quarterly. Um, village um, splits it between uh, CVD and the funds that we keep, and all the funds that go to the CVD need to be used for tourism. We have our own Weston fund that we give them, and that's, those are the funds that the commission has control of. What's the question? The chair on CVB. We do have a oh, good. Is the chair Neil and John right now? Uh, no, uh, it's Greg Fisher from Granite Peak. Okay, it is. Yeah. And and Hu Shang represents the Weston. Yeah, I thought. I thought. But John John's also on the board, yeah. representing hotel uh, hotel here as well. So is there actually no plans? No, it's Thanks. just okay. a FYI. Um, basically, it gives you an idea of where the money comes from, um, how it's used. And in the past, um, when we did not hold on to the CDB, we had some additional funds um, that need to be reused, 
to be used for tourism. They're the 36,796 in the next um, RFC that I was hoping we could make a decision with um, since they are pretty old right now. So we just get them moving on. But for now, is there any question on the history of room tax slash tourism commission? You know, and I think part of this um, was last time that we brought this up at the meeting was deciding whether or not this was something that we typically did was hand this over to CVB rather than keep it within tourism, but it's something that we have to get off the books, basically. I, I understand that. Eventually, we need to decide what we want to do with the funds. Right. But originally, we thought we were going to use them all for the wayfinding sites, and then we did it, and that's why there's additional funds left over. And so there's 66,709 in funds currently. Is that what I'm looking at? Or what, what's currently in, in the funds? So. In fund 19, the village's fund is 36,786. Yes. So this is money that was collected prior to the current contract, contract being signed where we have it's split into three pieces, right? I think when we, we budgeted for that wayfinding set, though, wasn't a part of it supposed to come from tourism? Wayfinding, not entrance sites. Yeah, wayfinding already did it. The question is whether or not this commission feels it would be appropriate to use this 36,000 and odd dollars for the entryway signage. If That's not, then the next agenda item, but um, what I wanted to do with this is give you a background of where that money came from, where the history is, where how much money we've typically taken in and given to the community, and how much money we've used here for ourselves. All right. I, mean, I apologize. I thought That's we were okay. on that. I thought we were on item nine again. already here. So do you want to move on to the next I'm agenda sorry. item? <laughs> I apologize. I thought I was I'll be looking for acknowledgement just say eight first. Just to keep in mind, too, uh, just a point for the Tourism Commission of our future plans. And I need, I probably need to get everybody on board, too. John knows a lot of stuff. We're currently looking at, you know, um, putting a, a building uh, along the interstate. And so we're going to be asking municipalities to contribute to that as well for, for that. We're also going to bring in Discover Wisconsin next year. And so we want to highlight the village of Western too. So that's going to be a $52,000 expenditure. So if you're looking for ways to spend money. There you go. Thank you. Just to keep it in the back of your head. How much time do we have to uh, hold on to it before we have to move it, Jessica? There, it does not specifically state, say in schedule. All right. Okay. Um, can we move on to item nine then? There's no discussion on item number eight. Yes. All right. Next issue is discussion of possible action on use of fund balance for entrance signs. So is this? This is something that was begun. This discussion comes actually from last meeting, I believe. Mm -hmm. Are we worried? Asking for you, you to kind of ponder this, I guess, over, over the last month and uh, then come back with some thoughts on whether or not um, use of these funds is $36,000 might be appropriate for entryway signage. We already have a budget for entryway signs, correct? We have a budget, but we don't necessarily have the uh, decision made on where the funding will come from. So options, Jessica, would be potentially using this, these tourism dollars that were, that were out there from our hiatus of having a contract with CBB. And then um, if, if the Tourism Commission does not feel that's appropriate, then we would get the funds from uh, CIP, yeah. or would our, un or would the 
portion of portions of room tax that we're collecting for village discretionary use be an option as well. The, we have so much going to CIP every year from the village controlled okay. tourism funds. So. so it just goes to CIP generically. Yes, there's no direct purpose. Michael, could you scroll down just a little bit, please? Yep, oh, right there. So the primary entryway signs that weren't in the original bid, is that we're, we're considering adding to the wayfinding project that we already have approved? Or are we are we talking about we're using- Doing the entryway signs, I think it's just a matter of where the, how we're funding them. Okay. And we took out, there was an entryway sign at um, Normandy that has been eliminated from there. So again, the, I think the balance we're looking for is um, really this like seventeen thousand. Because this twenty-one thousand was not um, awarded as part of the entryway sign. So really the wayfinding signs that we're looking at here are roughly 17,000. So that's what we're, that's what we're considering whether or not that 17,000 come from tourism. Yes. Okay. That helps. And then the remainder of it would be at our discretion to. Okay. It's just a little confusing because recommend uh, the fund balance from the room tax to of 36,792 and 72 cents toward the village entrance signs when we're just looking at 17,000. So that's where my confusion is coming from. Yes. My confusion too, because I was looking at the 54,000. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, okay. <laughs> just for clarification, we're talking 17,000 then really some change there. Should change that. So the motion would be to recommend to use, pull that from the Tourism Commission, the 17,000 to pay for the wayfinding signage set, and then that would go to the board from us. Is that correct? It doesn't have to go to the board. Okay. Any discussions? I think it should come from the 30% that goes to the village fund. Pull it from the village fund and keep our funds in tourism? If that goes towards events or um, other ways to draw people in, that's more money we're going to eventually get for the room tax compared to you know, put a tour of signs and probably need all that, but we're not going to get a return on investment, I don't think, from signs. Okay. Let's say keep tourism funds for tourism, maybe have a village fund some of this. Okay. Oh, Barb. I just had a question. Are any of those directional signs going to be for the parks? Because, like I said, we've had concern about the, um, the uh, what is it, golf, this golf thing that you can't read. Is it just the entryway sign? Yeah. Yeah, these are well, so the discussion at parks uh, last Monday was that there be some additional information obtained on getting some consistency with the signage at the park. Right. So right now there's a there's a hodgepodge of, you know, you get some I was just really wondering if any of these were going to be there. So this is where park. something is. It's all entryway signage. Okay. Or directional signage. Well I guess it's all entryway signage in this case. So that's all we're, we're just looking for direction from the tourism commission. That's it. Well, it doesn't sound like we want to give the money away for signs. Does anybody want to give it to CVB for any reason? They haven't requested anything to us for needing it or using it or wanting it for something. I'm not a fan of just giving it to them without any questions. Neither am I. I think we could probably find something to do with it. That would promote a local event. I I would recommend maybe John and we could talk about what we could do together. That's Weston centric. That would you know? Do you have to spend it before the end of the year? 
There's no. You just want to get it off the books. I would like to get rid of it. Yeah, I get it. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, we could talk more specifically, and then when's your next tourism? <clears throat> Uh, right now it's scheduled for October, but it might be November, depending on. We only usually meet a quarter. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, we could we could get together, and I, and and we could get together with anybody from the tourism committee and talk about potential potential ideas. What are some things that are going on that we could boost? You know. Yeah, and they're with winter and the fall and everything coming up. I'm sure there's shoulder still season will be end of April. Uh, May and early June, and so that shoulder season is a good time to or to market for that season to, to boost up people coming to the Western area. So and realistically, too, we could have events by if we may in November. We might have events that are before the beginning of the year that are coming to us. Where yeah, and unfortunately, that's the issue we're going to run into. You know, we have to have a special meeting earlier if there's a winter event that we want to promote before. Then it's not <laughs> saying that we couldn't do that. Yeah, I mean, that just takes us getting together and going. You know, get feedback from the community and people in the community that have things that are happening. But I think as long as we get off the books by the beginning of the year. And it's not necessarily need to, need to be either, though. Yeah. That doesn't mean we just throw it away. I'd no. like to talk to CBB. I'd like to talk to Parks and find out what they're doing and things they might need. I know there's a, a couple of RFIs that are going out there um, for a development of Kennedy Master Plan. Might That might be. A place to put some of it too. So if yeah, so if it's just you don't have a decision on where it's going at the moment, it can stay where it is. According to what Jessica's saying, mm -hmm. we don't have to designate where it's going right now. Yeah, I think we're just having a discussion. I I also just wanted to to let everyone know that the CDB is going through a strategic planning process right now. Um, and so we also have applied for the ARPA grant through the Marathon County for our building. To make it a travel center. Um, so as the months go on, November and December, we'll kind of know what our game plan is for that building once the strategic planning, our vision is done, and that we have applied for that. And we would like to have commitment from each of the municipalities that we serve. So as the year goes on, I just wanted to let everyone know that we'll have more of a plan that we'll be able to share with you once that is completed. All right, so it sounds like we're just going to hold on to it for now until we have an idea what to do with it, or a better idea possibly what to do with it. So would you, we need to just move to table the... I think in terms of the request, whether or not they consider the entryway signage, I think it would be appropriate to say that you would deny that request and retain the fees that took the money for a yet to be determined purpose would be my recommendation on that motion. So did you get all that? I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, so we're looking, we're looking motion, um, motion to deny uh, fund balance transfer um, and to keep it within tourism until we find. Or would it be tabled? No. I, I, would it be tabled? No, because this, no, is, a, this is something that we have to consider for this in particular. So I think we have to kill this and then we, we'd have to move on something else. So motion to reject. Um, the fund balance transfer, I guess, with that. Uh, or into a signage. Right. Yes. Thank you, Keith. Um, Mr. White. Yes. If there is things like this that are coming up, please, uh, you know, talk. Or I think we've got email set up, or if you want to directly contact us for things that are happening, or please encourage anybody else that has events that are happening. Yes. Um, so I think these are the requests for funding are generally coming through the office finance department, right? But it'd be nice and to have a tourism commission. So um, I, I know as we were getting some of these events that we, you know, we felt maybe there needed to be a um, reason to come up tourism commission. We were we were scheduling meetings more often. So um, I guess that seemed to have been working. I thought so. Unless there's a there's the issue of how it's been handled, I think you know we had it had it set up to where the CDB has been corresponding through okay. Jessica and Song and now Song, you know, had been Jenna, the team. So I think that just keeps 
the information flow more orderly. Well, I, yeah, and I, I agree. I'm not trying to disrupt that. It's just that if we're only meeting once a quarter and there's a event happening sometime in the next three months that we would be able to make a decision out to make. I, so I think the way the, and the way the contract is structured, it actually says these can be approved in between, you know, at any time with the approval of the village president, the administrator or tourism commission chair. But I think we felt that that was really not the intent and we would rather bring these to the committee commission. So we're not handling it that way. I mean, if there was a situation where they needed a, you know, an emergency approval, if you will, right. that could be done. But I know the intent is that we get together. So that's the way we've been kind of proceeding. That's probably why it's met more often. Okay. And if we need to actually officially modify the contract, I guess we can do that. But I think I handle it the way we're handling it. Hopefully it's working out okay. I just don't want to hold up anything that might benefit the community for oh yeah. Okay. Right. So we had said that there's time sensitive requests to get those in front of the commission sooner rather than later. Thank you. Sorry, Jessica, you're gonna hold the bag for a little bit yet. <laughs> All right. Um, next regular meeting date. Right now we have. Second on that. Sorry. A first. Oh, you're right. We did not. We didn't even vote on it yet. I'm sorry. So we got a second by John. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Um, so next. Item on the agenda is uh, we have a meeting date of October 17th, but possibly moving to November 21st. Well, last year we tried to do a budget meeting and tourism took up the whole time. Oh. So we're, gonna, we're not going to do that again. Um, budget's pretty important for the village and we need to get the adequate time for that. So I was tempted to move tourism it can be, I would say September, but that's next month right away. And then we're also going to have a budget meeting um, by November 21st. We should be done with our budget. We'll have, we should have adoption that night. Um, and that would just be at the board meeting. So that would be more ideal for tourism, but we can also see where our budget is at that point. So I'm sorry, for October 17th is what we're, we'd like to do then? No, I'd like to do November <laughs> 21st. November 21st, okay. Um, because you'll be working on the budget. Okay. All right, and how's everybody scheduled November 21st? Regular scheduled meeting. It is. Okay, great. Solves that. <clears throat> any objections with that? Are there any events before November 21st that we? There's currently um, the application for the West End Tourism Funds. There's only one application out, which is the DC Everest Basketball. Um, they have reached out to Jessica and Song and they forwarded it to me and I've sent it out to them. But that's the only current application that's come back. There has been interest, but at the CDB we kind of filter if it's not tourism related or generating hotel rooms, we explain that to them. I still send them the application, but those applications do not come back because they kind of know it's not going to fit that criteria. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so it sounds like November 21st then? Uh, topics for future meetings. Uh, remarks. Well, I can give I, if you want um, during that time. I can I can do a quick presentation about. Uh, I mean, you know, everybody that's new probably doesn't know all the things that we're onboarding. Um, so I could I could catch you up with just. To, all the new website, the new CRM, so all the things yeah. we're doing. So. Please. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Marsh and the members. I had, I had a question. I had asked Jessica prior to the meeting. Um, last month we had authorized $1,000 for Brianna Slater. Yes. And yes. I'd asked her, is there any way that when funds are authorized for these things, that the commission can get a report back so that we know, let's say if they come back next year, is there a way that we can find out what they did as far as financially so that we know what we're looking at? So I'll let Jessica give the answer. 
I talked to Jody and she said they are collecting information and they will turn, they will forward it on when they get it. Yep. So the, that one's the first one that did the application since we changed it. Mm -hmm. um, and I do believe they have 60 days to return it um, to get their feedback. And once we receive that, then I'll forward that on to um, Song and, and Jessica. Um, but yeah, as soon as those come in, we'll make sure that they do come in because that's a part of the application process to make sure that you receive the funds, you need to have that follow up. That way we kind of get an idea of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, if I remember right, there was a lot of people that had already expressed their interest in being there for it, and they're going to hold it right up the road here. Hills, West, and Leans. Yeah. yeah. Had it on yeah. July 30th. Yep. We did. yep. She, I did, we did talk a little bit um, after the event, and she was overwhelmed. She was still cleaning up and stuff like that, but she had, she said it was a good turnout. They had really good raffle baskets, and a lot of people were there for the event to do the 5K, but also were there to just support and be a part of the event to give back. Is she considering holding it here again next year? I do believe so, yes. Okay. If there's anything that she can send us or feedback when she gets a chance, I'd yep. love to see it. Yep, most definitely. Um, and anything we can do to make sure that she's able to hold it here again next year, these are the types of things we want to do. Yep. They were really happy with the Mountain Bay of doing the 5K. Yeah, I'll bet. Right on there. So she said it worked out. Great. Good to hear that. And how much funding do we have per year to donate to events like that? Mark well, depending on how much room tax. Yeah. There's a reserve that uh, is kept by the village for specific Western. I don't know what the reserve is. I think it's now. like one, one. 50, it was on the report for the last meeting. Okay. What was left over, like 156. So that one was approved for a thousand. And then we just cut the machine out of that account. Was that a thousand, do you think, was enough to cover what what happened there? I I think so, but I think, you know, I talked to, to Julie and I think that next year she's gonna focus on seeing how many people are coming from the outside and work more directly with the hotels to see if they can do a room block or somehow to promote it to get people. Um, because the cancer is so rare, she does have people who are coming from you know, other states and around the states, but she doesn't have an accurate number. So that's something that we're definitely gonna help her with to make sure she can capture that data. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I don't know if that's possible, being able to help her with her advertisement or, or yeah. Oh, yeah. whatever part of that. Yep. That would be, if that's something that we could assist with putting some time or money toward. Uh, do we have any announcements? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it, it just seems to me that um, this balloon event issue uh, lends itself so well to the bicyclists from Chicago, uh, Milwaukee, uh, Minneapolis, yeah. Madison. I mean, it just, it's right up their alley because it's outside of the area of Wausau. Yep. And yet it's in that area that um, is, lends itself so well to, to what they want and, and why, they, why they come up here. Yeah, that, I believe there'll be more marketing at, uh, with the, more, you're talking motorcycle clubs, obviously. Well, we are talking pedal bike. bike. Pedal bike. Oh, nice, okay, yeah. Well, well, I, you know, I um, they, they're up they're up here all the yeah. time because of yeah. nine mile and yeah. I mean they're up here every weekend. Yeah, they are. And so, uh, you know, I meet with all the bike clubs and organizations pretty regularly, and um, we're getting uh, together to talk about a strategy for next year. So, you know, and that's the thing, right? So if we can build multiple events. Or things that are going on so that you would want to spend a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday here. Um, that's that's our goal is to build these kind of bundles of things to go on to attract people from, yeah, from a distance from four hours out or so. So yeah, that's, that's a great one. And unfortunately, there wasn't really any uh, other, a lot of other things happening on that weekend. So, you know, there's, there's room for it, so. Thank you. Yeah. And for the Tuesday goal for this year, we did receive a gem grant from the state of Wisconsin. 
the CBD did. Um, so that was their almost thirty thousand dollars. As what Tim reported, yeah. those are the markets that we put those dollars in. Um, so we can apply again for another consecutive year here, in which we we will be doing in November. And then our um, outlook right now is to take it to our neighboring states, so we could make this taste and blow bloom fast, uh, like a you know a big Midwest event that's just for hot air balloons. So that's our next market that we want to capture. Great idea. Any other remarks? I think if the village of Weston is interested in, in inventing a bicycle that you can pedal and also has a balloon attached, <laughs> I think that's what we can do with that money. We could do a hybrid. Thing, right? Talk to Barb. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, that's all. We need a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. You a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? He is adjourned.